Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show that brings you the most insightful conversations with influential leaders from across this great country. I'm your host, and today we are delving into the aftermath of the 2023 Alberta provincial election. Now, it was a closely watched contest that stirred up a whirlwind of reactions from municipal leaders throughout the province. And on Monday night, the United Conservative Party, led by Daniel Smith, emerged victorious, securing a majority government. Their success came as they made significant gains in rural Alberta while experiencing some losses in the province's two largest cities, Edmonton and Calgary. This electoral pattern signals a unique dynamic that we'll be exploring a little bit later. Meanwhile, the Alberta NDP, led by Rachel Notley, made significant gains of their own. They picked up seats in Edmonton, Sherwood Park, Banff, and even managed to turn Calgary in their favor. The NDP's resurgence in urban centers represents an interesting contrast to the UCP's rural dominance. Now, throughout the Alberta election, Alberta municipalities raised their voice and highlighted their key priorities, community infrastructure, community safety, and community health care emerged as the three main concerns for local leaders. They recognize the crucial role that these aspects play in fostering prosperous and secure communities. Notably, on the other hand, the rural municipalities of Alberta came together and expressed their significant concerns and desires through the uniquely rural platform. These unique perspectives shed light on the challenges and aspirations of those living outside of the urban centers, reminding us of the diverse needs of the province as a whole. Now, today, we are honored to have two prominent figures joining us for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Kathy Heron, the president of Alberta Municipalities, who will provide insights into the more urban municipal perspective. While Paul McLaughlin, the president of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta, will shed the light and perspective of rural communities in the aftermath of this provincial election. Now, in addition to our esteemed guests, we will be exploring the social media reactions from municipal leaders that poured in Tuesday morning. Now, social media platforms have become essential channels for political discourse, it seems, and provides a glimpse into the immediate reaction of local leaders following elections like ours in Alberta. But first, let's dive into our conversation with Paul McLaughlin, President of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta. We want to gain his invaluable insights that will help us understand the unique challenges and aspirations of rural communities in the wake of Monday's election. So, Paul, I want to start with the big question that is on everyone's mind. Uh, Daniel Smith won a resounding majority government yesterday, uh, Monday. And what does this mean for the rural municipalities of Alberta and its membership? Well, I, I you know, it'd be disingenuous to say that uh, there will be a rural voice uh, in, in the UCP government. Um, but, you know, we play the long game. Um, I'm on, I think, year 16 of being elected official. So I've, I've been through multiple governments as an elected official. And, and I think that uh, um, elections are elections. Uh, they can be pretty aggressive and pretty nasty. But I'm looking forward to um, establishing a collaborative approach to solving the problems that are important. I think some of the key things that we're concerned about became election discussions. Uh, everything from health care to infrastructure to, uh, uh, to, to growing the economy. So um, I like elections. I think it's a refresh. I think it's important to establish this new people, new dialogues. Um, and, you know, it, and, and also shocking, shocking that there were some, I think, upwards of seven ministers that we had active relationships with. So uh, the only certainty in life is change. And definitely we've seen some change. I want to talk about some of the promises. Uh, the rural municipalities of Alberta released their uniquely rural platform during the middle of the campaign. Uh, I can say that I was driving around to some of the campaign offices and I did see some of those big giant signs that says uniquely rural. Uh, one of them was in the uh, deputy premier's office, uh, campaign office down in Lethbridge. 
Um, you were looking for the candidates to give their opinions and hopefully their pledges on some key issues that are facing rural municipalities for you as president. And as you talk to your board members, did you hear any sort of guarantees or any uh, feedback from the uniquely rural platform? Yeah, we did. And I think that, uh, you know, we really looked at it as a local candidate conversation. And I think that um, there's obviously very various levels of, of campaigning, um, but I think that uh, we did did see uh, that exposure, and we did see that exposure to all candidates. Um, uh, you know, we're a nonpartisan organization, so our goal is to to tell our story, and I think that our story was told. And and you know, we can take advantage of an election and 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 continue to to explain what we do and how we do things. And I, an important part, what we're learning is as we proceed is we need to begin to probably as rural municipalities and all municipal leaders uh, start to educate uh, other other forms of government, other uh, government organizations, exactly what we do and how we do things. And uh, and I think that post, post uh, swearing in and dealing with the new ministers, but we're going to spend a lot of energy um, just telling our story and how we do our business. I think it's terribly important. Uh, and you've probably heard it from multiple municipal leaders, but we have access to less than 10 cents on the dollar for tax dollars, but we do so much. And uh, and how we do that, I think, is a, is a great story that we should tell. I think one of the big key takeaways from Monday night is that urban-rural divide that a lot of pundits have been talking about. Now, this government, the UCP, is... Well, let's be honest, prominently in more rural Alberta than the two larger urban centers. Does this give uh, the RMA some hope that their issues are going to be addressed in this coming term? Yeah, and I and you know I, I think that if you play the long game, I think that we need to moderate our discussions to speak on behalf of all of Albertans. And I I, I don't want to use the the rural urban divide or this election. Um, to be the favorite and instead actually talk <laughs> um, some some core ways for us to build. You know, uh, it, it's been rough. I, I, I've been talking with a lot of folks, uh, issues related to mental health, addictions, uh, crime, uh, domestic violence. There's a lot of things that we need to do some healing uh, post-election. And I think that uh, my goal would be to, to start to moderate those discussions. And I think multiple times I've talked to you that I think the solution is collaboration. Um, and, and one of the things that's great about municipal politics is that um, we actually collaborate in uh, not on ideologies, but actually uh, based on ideas and solutions. And I think we need to start driving that conversation. Um, there's great value in bringing people with different views of the world in to solve problems. And I think that um, in order for us to heal, I think we need to do that. Uh, I think we need to move beyond ideology and actually look for ways, look for solutions that that'll bridge that. And I think we can take that leadership role. I think we can actually take advantage of this election and start to to, to build that story. And and I think that you know I just came from FCM on on uh, on, on Monday yesterday, and I'm, uh, and I, I I that is an amazing place because we don't talk about ideology. We're all in the same place trying to solve the the same problems, um, dealing with our rate payers and. And I think that that's a wonderful thing to do. I have no idea what the political affiliations of anybody in that room is, um, but I do know that they they see the world with a municipal lens and they see a community lens and they see public service. And, and they're an amazing asset with a lot of passion and, and energy. And I think that uh, I think we should build upon that. And I think that we can probably push this forward and still address the, the key things that are important to rural Alberta. What's priority one for the RMA and yourself with this new government? I'm assuming you'll be wanting to wait to see who the next minister uh, minister of municipal affairs is, who the next uh, minister of rural economic development is, agriculture, so on and so forth, issues that are important to rural communities. But what's priority one for the government as a whole? Well, I, I think that you know we can't uh, we can't ignore uh, the second largest fire season. Uh, a million hectares uh, have, have have burned. We're not even close to fire season yet, and and so we need to spend some energy on ways that we can actually shore up our response to to future uh, incidences. And we need to have a long discussion, a longer risk discussion on how to deal with events, especially provincial events. About a third of this province, I, I had toured uh, the areas in the north that actually were, were dealing and fighting these fires. Uh, tremendous uh, upheaval in these communities, uh, lots of anguish, lots of fear. And I think that we need to spend some energy um, sort of debriefing that, looking for ways that we can fix things and do it better. Uh, tremendous response from everybody. 
uh, amazing. And we, we, we dealt with the, the, uh, the issues collectively, but uh, every time you have something like this, learn from it, make it better and improve it. So I think that definitely we're looking for those cabinet positions, what relationships we may or may not have working with them. But I think the core thing is we still got to continue with the business of government, still have to continue with the business of moving forward, getting our commodities to market and all the other pieces too. Uh, and, and moving forward on those pieces is also what we're going to do as well. So we don't pause, we don't stop, we just keep going and uh, we'll take everybody along with us. One of the big things that a lot of people have been talking about is the uh, the sort of one rural riding, traditional rural riding, Banff Kananaskis that the NDP did pick up. Uh, a lot of concerns around the uh, mining in the Rockies was addressed in this campaign. Uh, for you, was this an issue that was brought forward to your members or brought forward to RMA? And what do, what do you make as the president of RMA that the NDP were not able to make big inroads into the sort of more rural areas. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you, if you want to talk about sort of the, 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 the mining and the mountaintop mining specifically, not the, but the mountaintop mining conversation, our members responded by wanting to ensure that we, we really picked up a piece on water quality protection. So we weren't speaking specifically to mining, but actually playing the long game on how we have those conversations on top of that. Uh, we need to start talking about water quantity as well. Um, you know, we're dealing with with a severe drought. I've actually looked at the recent maps um, of the province of Alberta and 12 centimeters downward, a one in 50 year drought. So when you go below the soil, we have a subsurface soil drought all throughout this province, a one in 50 year. So our members really want to create resilient communities. We need to have this discussion on, on how to best use resources. We need to play the long game attached to it. And so um, I don't think it was ignored in this election. And I don't think it was something that that the election said, uh, yay, let's move forward on this or not against it. And in fact, actually, I'm glad it became a dialogue. I got glad it became an understanding. And, and uh, our members want to start having these really hard long-term discussions on how to protect the landscape, how to have this discussion related to those resources that are critical to all of our communities. Um, and we're seeing that. And climate change resiliency, community resiliency, all those pieces need to be part of the discussion. And, and I think that the Banff Canmore, uh, it probably shows that that split, that that dividing. Um, I think as far as the other rural ridings, I mean, really rural ridings have, have been conservative um, from a from a political standpoint. But, you know, when I have the, the kitchen table conversations or at my conference with my meetings with, with my members in the South, for example, um, it, you it doesn't matter. It's not party based. It's just talking about the land. Um, we are stewards of the land. That's that's how we see the world. And uh, and I think that's the important lens that we can bring to the table and make sure we have those discussions. So I think, uh, again, going back to my my previous comment, there's some collaborative opportunities and discussions we can have. Uh, my members want to have those discussions. We actually and, 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 and RMA actually has the oldest reciprocal. So the, one of the oldest insurance companies in Canada, actually the oldest. And uh, Alberta is, has had five of the 10 largest insurance claims on weather based incidences. Um, five out of 10 have been in the province of Alberta. This is recognized throughout the world. We go get reinsurance for our municipal partners and our public sector. And Lloyd's of London, uh, downtown New York, they know where Alberta is because of the vulnerability we have to those type of events. And my members want to look for resilient uh, future. So we want to have those discussions. And again, not from a partisan standpoint, but just on behalf of all of Albertans. Looking back on the last 30 days, uh, Paul, I want to know, do you believe that municipal issues were forefront in this campaign? And if not, or if so, why? Yeah. And, you know, it's it's funny because I live in this space and you, you live in this space. <laughs> and uh, and it, municipal politics is one of those interesting conversations where you know who you know who they are. Um, you have a bit of an idea what they do, but you don't quite know. Um, you know, is it the forefront of a campaign? And 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 because uh, I don't think it's clearly understood what exactly we do. Uh, if if there's a municipal funding pinch, people are people, the the average voter really probably doesn't care too much about that. Um, they don't see it. And but I think a, a perfect example I think is the 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 arena deal that that's going on in in Calgary. You know, it's that fairness discussion, that clarity. Um, you know, we had a billion dollar cut. Uh, to, to our infrastructure funding province-wide from all municipalities, probably probably a little more than that. So we have a funding deficit. You've heard from AB Munis, they've calculated about a $30 billion uh, infrastructure deficit. 
And I think that we really need to have this conversation of playing that long game uh, and, and making us whole again, but not just making us whole, but actually having an understanding of how things move. Um, with a billion dollar cut, I've, I've made the analogy publicly and I don't mind doing that here too as well, is that uh, if someone owes you money uh, and 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 they're saying, yeah, you know, we're being fiscally conservative and, and you know, we got to toe the line and things are tough uh, and, and I'll definitely pay you back. Um, but, uh, and then they go on a holiday, uh, you're going, where's my money? And so I've been told to be fiscally responsive. I've been told all these pieces that, you know, things are tough. Uh, and then I saw tremendous spending by, by the government uh, and spending promises. At the same time, we haven't had our, our core funding replaced or, or corrected. So we'll continue to have that conversation because I think uh, as we start to see this squeeze that we have uh, as rural municipal leaders and as all municipal leaders, um, they, people, the average Albertan is going to start to feel this. If we continue to be squeezed from an infrastructure and funding deficit, uh, definitely Albertans will notice when things start to slip a bit. And I'll tell you right now, they're starting to slip at the cost of, of the cost of goods, the cost of doing roads, all the other pressures we're having, and also workforce issues. Uh, the average Albertan will definitely know that uh, municipalities are suffering from budget cuts that have occurred in the past. So hopefully we can correct that. Now let's dive into our one-on-one interview with Kathy Heron, the president of Alberta Municipalities. Her invaluable insights will provide us with a comprehensive view of the priorities the organization has when it comes to working with Daniel Smith's next government. So, Kathy, I want to start with the big uh, question for Alberta municipalities. Uh, Danielle Smith and the UCP have been elected uh, uh, to a new mandate. What does this mean for Alberta municipalities? Well, I guess it kind of could mean a, a fresh start. Um, we have, well, you know, we'll have a brand new cabinet. I, I have suspicions it won't be as big as the previous cabinet. Uh, I would love to see Rebecca Schultz return as municipal affairs minister, although I don't know if that will happen. If I have any say in that, I would I will exert that. But um, so, yeah, we'll have that kind of a reset. And then it's back to business. The one nice thing about um, having a government return is they can just pick up where they left off. Right. And they don't have to have a lot of uh, time, at, you know, getting back up to speed. Uh, my city, St. Albert, both. Um, both MLAs were returned. Actually, I have three, but yeah, all three were returned. One is uh, NDP, one is or two are USP. So I guess get to carry on with the already established relationships. So that's all good. Um, there'll be some new relationships that are going to have to be formed. And I think we're going to have to um, somehow work with this government to make sure that those that went quite orange, obviously, particularly Edmonton, are not forgotten about. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in our sure. uh, yeah. conversation, but I want to stick to the point of this new incoming government. Alberta municipalities laid out three priorities that they wanted for this next government, community safety, community infrastructure, and community uh, health care. Um, yeah. you, you've talked to your local candidates. I'm assuming you talked to the leader, Daniel Smith, now premier Daniel Smith, premier elect Daniel Smith. Are you, uh, Cautiously optimistic that these three priorities are going to be addressed in this coming term. Well, I guess that's one of the, I don't know the the downfalls or of having the government return is we had been for for infrastructure in particular we've been advocating for a long time for an increase to the pot of money for LGFF. Uh, I was hoping if it was an NDP government they would hear that because the uh, current UCP government have not promised that and so there's no commitment from them. Uh, so we're back to where we started. We ha still have to work on an allocation formula between, so we know how to divide the money up between the RMA members and the upper municipality members. So, I, you know, I don't see a lot of uh, potential for what we were hoping for there, but we'll keep trying, keep advocating. Maybe there's potentials for different streams of funding outside of LGFF. Maybe there's some that are particularly focused on housing or particularly focused focus on transit for example we used to have green ship funding so there's some options um for separate streams which i'd like to see uh when it comes to public safety i guess there's going to be some concern and some nervousness that uh, the provincial police force conversation is going to start right back up the premier elect uh, she was very vocal during the leadership campaign 
that she supported provincial policing. She She's on record saying she would do it right away. The conversation was very quiet and eerily so almost during the campaign. No one talked about it. I did talk to uh, Mike Ellis about it and all he would say is no decisions have been made. So there, there's there's some anxiety, I would say, uh, from the membership on what's going to happen next. So, you know, the the they seem to be switching to this idea that municipalities can make up their own decision if they wanted to do municipal forces like Grand Prairie. But for those that are not big enough for that or don't want to go down that route and want to keep RCMP, I'm not sure where that's going to happen. So be one of my first uh, questions and conversations with that government is what's the next steps? Are you going to do more consultation? Are you going to just give notice to the federal government that we're out? Like, who knows? But that'll be one of my first questions for sure. And what and about the it, around health care? Yeah. And then health care. Uh, you know what, they, they've made some positive steps, especially when it comes to EMS. So that so that's good. Both parties were very uh, focused on healthcare and they have ideas. So I think there's some positivity, no matter who had gotten in. Um, so there, there's, I think we'll be well served by the UCP on healthcare. I think it's gonna be a priority for them. I wanna go back to a little statement that you made in the, your first answer. And that's about the sort of urban rural divide that we've seen in this election. Uh, you said most of the, well, all of Edmonton and some of the outskirts of the greater Edmonton area, whether it be St. Albert or even Sherwood Park have gone uh, all orange, the NDP. Uh, most of Calgary, the majority of the seats in Calgary have gone to the NDP. As of recording, there are still gonna be official recounts and it could change. But as of recording, uh, the only and in Lethbridge, one seat uh, went to the NDP. How important is it for Alberta municipalities to a advocate for all, but also ensure that the voices of the two largest centers in this province get heard at that cabinet table, but also get heard with infrastructure funding, with health care funding, with community safety funding? I think that sometimes the strength of Alberta municipalities is we represent the big cities, um, but we also represent, you know, a, a very remote town or village in, in the north part of Al Al Alberta. Uh, I've always been an advocate to end the rural urban divide by combining the two associations into one big voice. It's not well received uh, by the RMA group because they feel like they have unique issues, which they do. But I think even within my association, the summer village is very different from the city of Edmonton. And we seem to find a good balance and consensus to advocate for those different issues. And we were stronger that way. So I think, you know, quite often there's actually four groups that the provincial government will reach out to. They'll reach out to RMA, Alberta municipalities, and then Edmonton and Calgary. The midsize are becoming a bit of a voice too. Um, so when, when they're in good, when, the big cities are in the good books of the province. They they have good access. When they don't, they rely on Alberta municipalities to do the work for them. And, and that's what we're here for. We will be making sure that Edmonton and Calgary, uh, and some of those really sticky urban issues, especially when it comes to homelessness and mental health and the crime that they're seeing in the big towns, big sorry, big cities, and they're very in the downtowns, in the core, the, that, um, that I can speak to as the president of the association on their behalf. What's the next step? So the chips have fallen the way that they have. The UCP have been elected to a new mandate. What's step one for Alberta municipalities now? Because I can imagine there's a lot of things that you want to accomplish. You've mentioned three, healthcare, community safety, and infrastructure. But is it meeting with the next, uh, well, now Premier-elect Smith? Is it seeing who the next Minister of Municipal Affairs, whether it be Rebecca Schultz or somebody else? So when when Premier Smith became the premier, when she won the leadership race, uh, we did invite her to speak with us. And she she her communication was all communication with municipalities needs to go to the Missile Affairs Minister, which is it's too bad. I would like to meet with her directly. Still, we'll try. So I think we'll have to wait a couple of weeks before the cabinet is um, announced. And as soon as that's done, uh, the invitations will come, be coming to talk about um, our unique issues and then we have the big convention in the fall that all the MLAs will be invited to and they can they can sit and listen to uh you know 
town of Redwater, as well as, you know, big city of Lethbridge on what's important, you know, through bear pit conversations and resolutions, et cetera. My last question before you, before I let you go here, Kathy, is about the Think Alberta Vote Local campaign that Alberta municipalities ran. Now, I, I, I sat in on your press conferences. I enjoyed them. And because I think Alberta municipalities and municipalities in general need a stronger voice in the media, and I'm hoping to do that. But for you, did you get the responses from the candidates that you were expecting from across Alberta when your membership, your 275 members, went to their local candidates? Or were there some that just didn't respond? I think there'll be some um, post-election check-in with all the with all the mayors and councillors around Alberta to see what, what their response was. I'll, t- I'll be honest with you, Chris. It was always an uphill fight to get municipal issues front and center in this election. The, the, the only thing that I ever heard during this election was healthcare and trust and leadership. A little bit about public safety uh, and housing, et cetera, but it was an uphill climb to make sure that we're heard. And so we, we, ha- we still need to do a, a good job of trying to make sure these new MLAs that are elected hear those three messages. Now, on Tuesday morning, mayors from across Alberta took to social media to congratulate their newly elected MLAs and the newly elected Premier-elect Danielle Smith. Their posts and comments offer us a glimpse into the immediate reactions and public sentiment among these crucial local leaders. Mayor Jody Gondekt from the city of Calgary announced via Twitter that she had congratulated the premier and her caucus on their victory and looked forward to building relationships with all Calgary MLAs and meeting with the premier in the days to come. She also goes on to say that as a council, we'll be reiterating to both Calgary caucuses the importance of Calgary remaining affordable, providing affordable and accessible housing and transit, ensuring investment in critical infrastructure, retaining and attracting talented individuals and businesses. She goes on to add that her message is simple. Regardless of who you voted for in this election, all of us have an obligation to each other to stand united against hate in all of its forms. Now, up Highway 2 to Edmonton, Amarjeet Sohi, the mayor of the city of Edmonton, Alberta's capital, extended his well wishes to Premier Smith for winning the 2023 provincial election. And now, as we've said, Edmonton, the UCP were shut out of on election night. And Amarjeet Sohi, in the social media post, says, and I quote, while the election results show that Alberta's capital city will have no representation in the UCP government, I truly hope that our new provincial government will govern for and represent all Albertans. To that effect, I am ready and willing to assist in any way that I can. This reality also makes it more critical than ever for our provincial government to work with Edmonton City Council as an important partner to ensure that the voices and aspirations of all Edmontonians are reflected in the provincial decisions. In the town of Canmore, Mayor Sean Crozert uh, congratulated MLA elect Sarah L. McGelly on her nail biter of an election victory in Banff, Kananaskis. He says that he looks forward to working with the newly elected MLA. And he went on to say that he congratulates Premier Daniel Smith and the UCP on the election victory. The town of Canmore looks forward to working with you to the benefit of Canmore residents and of all Albertans. He also went on to congratulate the leader of the official opposition, Rachel Notley, and the NDP on an election victory of sorts, improving vastly in seats and popular votes. Halfway between Edmonton and Calgary, Mayor Ken Johnson of the City of Red Deer congratulated Daniel Smith and the UCP on their re-election. He goes on to say, I look forward to continuing to work with the provincial government to deliver results for Red Deerians. Now in southern Alberta, Mayor Jack Van Reen of the town of Coldale congratulated MLA Grant Hunter on his re-election to the United Conservative Party for the Tabor-Warner constituency. 
He went on to add, Grant has always strongly advocated for Coaldale and all of Southern Alberta. Our council and administrative team look forward to our continued relationship working on so many important files for the town of Coaldale. I want to thank Paul and Kathy for sitting down with me today and chatting about the aftermath of the provincial election. To our viewers, thank you for tuning in, being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please, please hit the subscribe button below so you can stay up to date on all the latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up from across Canada, and we can't wait to share their great stories with you. Now, if you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us continue to grow and produce more quality content like today's episode. Every little bit helps, and we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And please don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and much, much more. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our community even if it's just for five minutes. Thanks again for watching another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. We'll be back next time. Until then, remember, just keep talking.